Okay, before you click off this video, this is an RV video. This is 100% RV related. This is probably more RV related than almost any RV related video I've done in the past. So I know a lot of folks, they see a tractor, they see stuff in the front of the tractor, they see dump trailer, tilt trailer, all this stuff, and they think it's not going to be an RV video. This is an RV video because what's in these boxes are probably more relevant to RVs than any video I've ever made. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox these. The whole reason I got the tractors because the combined weight of both these boxes is about 120 pounds. So you can see these are triple, <laughs> trip, no, there's like four layers of cardboard that make up these boxes. So yeah, this is uh, gonna be a really interesting video. And it's one that is kind of a follow-up to a video that I made with the RV a while back. And I was talking about frames and some of the different things that manufacturers do when it comes to building on top of frames and some of the things that can stress out frames. So if you are looking at buying an RV, if you've watched content on RVs in the past, if you've watched my videos or any of the other videos that deal with RVs, this is gonna be more relevant to RVs than you've probably ever imagined. So hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so before I magically jump to the next scene where these boxes are all unboxed and everything's laying out here, let me preface this by saying uh, this is probably something no other RV reviewer would have access to. And I want to give a huge shout out to the folks at Lippert for providing this to me after I requested them because, again... This is very unconventional what's in these boxes. This is behind the scenes kind of stuff that you typically don't see. And after I shot a video where I was kind of talking about some of the things Lippert builds and designs and all the different brands that, okay. And all the different things that Lippert both manufactures and owns, you know, this was one of those areas where I was really, really on the fence on if they'd actually send this to me after I requested it. All right, guys, so I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. This is so cool. So I sent an email off to the folks over at Lippert requesting if they could send me one foot long sections of every frame that they manufacture. Now there's only one I believe that's not here. There may be more, but this is pretty much all of them. And the one that's not here is the frame section from a DRV, only because that is a one-off specific type of frame that only DRV uses in the chassis of their fifth wheels. But what you're looking at in front of you is, again, pretty much every frame section that they produce in their chassis plant up in Indiana. Now. What's really cool about their chassis plant is the fact that it's a lot higher tech than you think. These sections are what almost every RV, almost every RV, travel trailer, fifth wheel manufacturer use. And what's really cool about this is it really demonstrates the differences in the types of frames that are available for different applications. So even though you may see three 12 inch segments right here, sections, two 10 inch sections, two eight inch sections, a six inch section, and then a bunch of boxed six inch tubular sections right there, you may not directly know what your RV has, but now you can actually see some of the differences right here. So what I'm noticing right off the bat are even when it comes to like these 12 inch sections, the thickness of the steel is gonna be different. Much of this is designed from an engineering perspective to make sure that whatever the specific manufacturer needs from a structural perspective is being met without going too heavy. So this piece of steel right here, look at these sections. And I have a digital caliper I'm going to break out in a second so you guys can kind of see what they actually look like. But you can see right here that this section, which is called the web, and this is the flange, this is significantly thicker than this section right here. So this appears to be almost half, maybe a little more than half the thickness of this right here. And then you can also see how the flange up top is significantly thicker. So you can see how the flange is much wider up here. This section right here is a little bit thicker than this section right here. The top flange is about the same thickness across these two, but both are significantly thinner than this piece of steel right here. And then as we move to a 10 inch section, you can see the 10 inch section right here closely emulates the 12 inch section right here. You can see that this section right here very much emulates this section right here. Actually, this one appears to be even a little bit heavier. But yeah, these are all the different types of frame materials that LCI can choose from when engineering the specific frame that a manufacturer may need. Here's another example. 
both of these six inch tubular sections or boxed sections right here look to be very similar. But the thickness of this one and the weight is significantly greater than this one right here. Which means if you have a travel trailer and you have this perception that this is what you have, you may have this, or you think you have this and you may have this. So this is not like a one size fits all application. A lot of folks might think, well, it's the same frame on every unit that you buy. And that's just not the case. So there are even versions of this that have boxed sections underneath them for where the suspension components might be, or just how the manufacturer wants that specific frame for their unit. So when you look at this and you see what's in front of you, the takeaway here is that your perception of frames may be different than the reality, right? The perception is that everything's the same, but the reality is the frames that are created by LCI for use by manufacturers to build RVs are gonna be very much designed for that specific manufacturer's needs in terms of floor plan, weight requirements, slide type, all of those. You need thicker steel to be able to manage more weight and taller steel sections can reduce flex. So, you know, again, all of these are designed for different purposes. If you have like a 12 inch section right here that has a 10 inch section beneath it for the drop frame, well, there's a reason for that. There's a reason why the frame is being designed for a specific manufacturer with perhaps an eight inch drop frame versus a six inch versus a 10 inch. So yeah, this is what they all look like. And let's pull out the digital caliper real quick. Let's take a look at the actual thicknesses of each one of these sections. Okay, so now I have my trusty digital caliper right here and we're gonna go through and we're gonna measure the thickness of the web and the flange on all of these. And then we're gonna come down to these boxed sections right here and we're also gonna measure the thickness of the side versus the top of the boxed sections. So we're gonna start with the 12 inch sections up here, which are these three. Then we're gonna move to the 10 inch sections, the eight inch sections, the six inch section, and then the boxed sections down here. So starting at zero with the 12 inch section. So the web on this one is 0.27 inches thick. The flange is 0.33 inches thick. Next one. The web is 0.18 inches thick. The flange is 0.19 inches thick. The web is 0.21 inches thick. And the flange is 0.19 inches thick. And some of that may vary slightly, so the further you get back, it might be a little bit thicker. Now it's pretty much the same thickness until you get to this area right here. We've moved on to the 10 inch sections right here. So those were the three 12 inch sections. 0.14 inches thick. Point one eight inches thick. Point two six inches thick. So that's roughly a quarter of an inch. Point two inches thick or point two one inches, almost point two two inches thick. Point one six inches thick. Point two inches thick, almost point two one inches thick. Now we're moving on. Well, actually, this is an eight inch and this is an eight inch. So we just got out of the tens, did the first eight. Now we're going to do the second eight. Point one five inches thick. Point one seven inches thick. So we've moved from the eight inches to the six inch section. The six inch section has the same thickness in the web as this eight inch section, point one five. Point one four. So there's a bit of a difference here. So this is a little thinner than this flange up here. Now we're gonna move on to the three boxed sections. Now, I'm pretty sure that this boxed section right here 
The reason why I'm flipping it is you can see some of the cutting debris right there in the edge. And I wanna make sure we get the cleanest possible section. So this one's significantly thicker than this one. So obviously this would be used on a higher GVWR travel trailer than this one would be. Now, what I don't know, and it would be interesting to know is what say the RV manufacturer has in terms of the frame. If they wanna go with say the thickest, heaviest duty 12 inch I-beam frame, even though they know they're gonna be sacrificing weight or they're gonna be adding significant amount of weight, then you know, do they have that choice? And that's a question I'll ask them. So the first six inch boxed section is 0.13 inches. Let's see what the top of it is. 0.14 inches. There's nothing hanging down off of that, so that's an accurate reading. Next, we're gonna do the heavy duty section right here. 0.18 inches. 0.19 inches, so a little bit thicker up top. Now we've moved from the six inch sections to the five inch section. This is a 0.134 section. And that's a 0.13 inch section. So there you have it. You know, it's really interesting to see all the different sections. And when I requested this, I honestly didn't think I would get so many different sections. I thought I'd get maybe one 12 inch section, one 10 inch section, one eight inch section. And I thought that these two would probably be the same, right? A lot of folks believe that this piece right here, this boxed section is universal on all of them. When clearly, even though the section from a, you know, a vertical perspective is the same height, the thickness of the material is much greater here. And again, you can certainly tell in terms of weight. This weighs significantly more than this one, which easily means, I mean, these are only 12 inch sections, and this easily means that just by going to a slightly thicker material, you add a tremendous amount of weight to an RV. And this would probably equal in the thousands of pounds. So imagine how much weight that could add to most units and what that does to axle capacity, what that does to what they can build on the inside of the trailer, and if it's even towable by the type of vehicle you might wanna to tow it with. So these are all really important things to consider. I mean, these flanges themselves vary greatly depending on the type of frame that you have. So. You know, you could have a frame with this super, super heavy section, and you could have a frame with this significantly lighter section. You might not be able to tell just by looking at the side of the RV. Your drop frame below it may actually have different sizes as well. So next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little caliper right here, and I'm gonna walk over to our fifth wheel, our Brookstone, and I'm gonna measure to see which one of these sections are used for both the main I-beam as well as the drop beam. I do know that it has a 12 inch main I-beam, and I do know that it has a 10 inch drop beam. I just don't know which one of these I-beams it utilizes. So this is where engineers come in. This is where they have to determine the suitable use of materials for the frame that a manufacturer needs for their RV. Now the question again is, does a manufacturer have the ability to say, you know, even though you spec'd in this for our travel trailer or fifth wheel, we want this. Or even though you spec'd in this, we want this. You know, and that's a good question for them. So I'll field that question to them. I know they're gonna be watching this and uh, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see how much say so a manufacturer has if they wanna go up in terms of frame strength, if they wanna go up from something like this to something like this, or from something like this to something like this, or even from something like this to something like this. So again, I will field that question to them and hopefully they'll give me a good answer to it. But let's take a walk over to the Brookstone and see what sections we have on our Brookstone. Okay, so we are underneath the Brookstone and I'm actually a little surprised. I thought that they used the wider flanged I-beams when in fact they actually use the slightly narrower ones here. So this is probably all about weight and I imagine if you have like a large toy hauler, it would be different. So the section right here is 0.2, and the section right here, let's see if I can get a good section of it. And that's a little too wide right there, but it looks to be about the same. I can't see exactly because it's all kind of welded right there. I'll definitely be able to tell when we get back, and I know exactly which one this is on that table. Zero this out real quick. 
So the section right here is also 0.2. Yep, I know exactly which one we have just based on the thickness of this I-beam. Even though this is a 12 inch I-beam with a 10 inch drop beam, this isn't gonna be their heaviest frame possible. So let's get back to the table so I can show you what we have. Okay, so we're back and my RV has these two sections right here. So if I stack it the way that we have it over here, that's what we have. 12 inch, 10 inch. Very, very cool. So that's what it looks like. Okay, so we have our scale out here. Keep in mind, this is just a standard, you know, household scale. This isn't a scientific scale, but it will give us a pretty good idea of the differences between some of the weight. Okay, so I actually came back out here to reweigh everything with a far more accurate scale. The scale I used before was your traditional like bathroom scale and I wanted to have a better reading so I went ahead and picked up this scale which will give me a far far more precise reading I'm going to set it for pounds and ounces so I'll be able to give you almost exactly probably exactly what each one of these segments weighs and the reason I'm doing this is because I wasn't a hundred percent sure of the accuracy that my scale or the, the other scale was providing and actually I know it wasn't that accurate so let's see what happens now first I'm going to turn this on going to calibrate down to zero. We're going to start with the five inch section, boxed tubular section. Okay, so this weighs four pounds, 11.5 ounces. Yeah, these readings are significantly heavier than they were with the previous video. I think that was like two and a half pounds in the previous video. So that scale was certainly off. At least it was off at these lower weights. You stand on it, it's different. Now we're going to do the uh, thinner sidewall six inch piece right here this is i believe this is a one eighth inch sidewall okay so we are five pound 11 ounces with this piece right here now this is the thicker sidewall i believe this is three sixteenths versus the one eighth and we're going to see specifically how much this one weighs because this one is a lot heavier All right, eight pounds, two ounces, three ounces roughly. Yeah, that is a significantly heavier tubular piece of steel than this one. Now we're gonna move to the first I-beam section. This is a six inch I-beam. Four pounds, six ounces, four pounds, seven ounces in that range. The wind is throwing it off slightly because it is extremely windy today. We're gonna move to the first eight inch section. Six pounds, one ounce. Yeah, they are definitely a lot heavier when accurately read versus the uh, the other scale I was using. All right. This is a much larger eight inch I-beam. So that is eight pounds, 12 ounces. We're gonna move to the 10 inch I-beam sections. This is actually the same I-beam section that's the drop frame on our fifth wheel. Seven pounds, two ounces. This piece hangs below this piece on ours. Gonna go to this heavier section. This is much heavier. 10 pounds, 12 ounces. Now this is the 12 inch I-beam section, the first of three, and this is what we have for the main beam on our fifth wheel, with this one being the 10 inch drop beam. Nine pounds, one ounce, or about 10 pounds. So this one is roughly the same weight as this piece of I-beam, which has a much wider flange than this one. Now we're gonna move to essentially the 12 inch version of this 10 inch in terms of the flange width. So that is 12 pounds, 12, 13 ounces. We're getting pretty heavy. You gotta imagine how much all this will weigh 
across the entire length of a fifth wheel and then you got to double it because you have double frame rails one frame rail on each side plus all the stuff that makes the bath deck as well as the overhang in the upper deck portion now this is the heaviest piece we have what do you guys think that's going to weigh this thing is super heavy duty very thick widest flange thickest web this is just yeah this one's really really heavy 16 17 pounds 17 pounds four or five ounces wow this thing is a beast so there you have it certainly not light so if you take the lightest segment which is going to be this five inch box rail this one looks like it is either used on maybe the upper deck portion of a fifth wheel or the front a-frame portion of a travel trailer i'm not exactly sure where they use this piece yeah roughly five pounds five pound one ounce so that's just one 12 inch segment of this tubular steel so this is where it's important to understand how much weight you add to your rv simply by changing the thickness of steel. None of these are thin pieces of steel. None of these should have any problem holding up the type of RV that they're designed for. But you can imagine the type of force it takes to bend this type of steel, you know, if it's being used for the A-frame of an RV. Especially this, I mean, this is just incredibly thick. I have a feeling this is what they use in the upper decks on fifth wheels, basically the overhang portion right there where a lot of that stress is gonna be transferred. And then again, this is the 12 inch I-beam that we have on our fifth wheel. So you're talking over 10 pounds in just one foot strip of this I-beam. And then again, here's the 10 inch drop beam portion. So over seven and a half pounds with that by itself. That is crazy. So again, the whole point of this video is really to point out the types of steel that they use and why when you're manufacturing the frame of an RV, is it wiser to go with something that may weigh less but is still structurally capable of handling the load versus, you know, just going to something super heavy? Because if they use this over this, well, this section right here weighs like eight pounds more than this section right here per foot. And every foot you add just increases the weight exponentially, not just the weight, but the balance as well. So, you know, these are all really important things to understand whenever you talk about the construction of an RV. Now, again, the question I'm going to throw at the folks over at Lippert is if I am an RV manufacturer, and this is typically the six inch boxed section that's used on a travel trailer, can I upgrade to this one if I want being heavier? understanding that if I do that, it's gonna throw more weight up at the front of the RV in terms of tongue weight. Also, if you know I'm Coachman and I'm building the Brookstone and I wanna build this thing on the craziest frame possible and I wanna take this and swap to this, which is much heavier, can I do it? Can I call them up and say, you know what? I know this is what you guys recommend, but can I go to this? Because that would be interesting to know. And the response might likely be from engineers, why? Why are you gonna do it? If this right here, with this is capable of handling what you're building plus an additional five to six to seven thousand pounds if you wanted to add it whereas this and this is just going to add significantly more dry weight to your rv and it will add the capability more but you're going to have to upgrade your axles your tires everything to be able to support it why would you want to do that if it's just going to add mass to your rv very same situation when I had the folks from Texas Pride build this trailer for me. The fact is that they said, why add bracing and structural rigidity where you don't need it? All you're doing at that point is adding mass and taking away from the cargo handling capability because you want to keep your gross vehicle weight rating down as low as possible. You know, the other scenario, which would be kind of interesting, is if I wanted to do like a, a double box frame, like a DRV, if I wanted to take this segment and go like that. So that's gonna be similar to like a 12 inch I-beam segment. But if I did something like that and I said, you know, this is what I want my fifth wheel to use, could they do it? And what would the process be to get them to do something like that if it was, you know, something an RV manufacturer was willing to pay for? So that's really what it comes down to ultimately is what's the right frame for the RV, for the application that it's being used for. But then at the end of the day, specifically, what are you putting on that frame? And does it need a larger, heavier frame that's simply gonna add to the overall weight of the RV? Anyways, guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. Please leave a comment below. I do want the folks from Lippert to kind of chime in. Maybe I can talk to them offline and kind of find out some of the answers to these questions I had. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.